The Testament of Levi. Levi, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. The copy of the words of Levi, what things he appointed to his sons, according to all that they should do, and what things should befall them until the day of judgment. He was sound in health when he called them to him, for it had been shown to him that he should die. And when they were gathered together, he said to them, I, Levi, was conceived in Haran and born there. And after that, I came with my father to Sechem, and I was young, about 20 years of age, when with Simeon, I wrought the vengeance on Hamor for our sister, Dinah. And when we were feeding our flocks in Abel Ma'ul, a spirit of understanding of the Most High came upon me, and I saw all men corrupting their way, and that unrighteousness had built to itself walls, and iniquity set upon towers, and I grieved for the race of men, and I prayed to the Most High that I might be saved. Then there fell upon me a sleep, and I beheld a high mountain. This is the mountain of Aspis and Abel Ma'ul. And behold, the heavens were opened, and an angel of the Most High said to me, Levi, enter. And I entered from the first heaven into the second, and I saw their water hanging between the one and the other. And I saw the third heaven far brighter than those two, for there was in it a height without bounds. And I said to the angel, Wherefore is this? And the angel said to me, Marvel not at these, for thou shalt see four other heavens brighter than these, and without comparison, when thou shalt have ascended thither, because thou shalt stand near the Most High, and shalt be his minister, and shalt declare his mysteries to men, and shall proclaim concerning him who shall redeem Israel, and by thee and Judah shall the Most High appear among men, saving in them every race of men, and of the portion of the Most High shall be thy life, and he shall be thy field, and vineyard, fruits, gold, and silver. Hear then concerning the seven heavens, the lowest is for this cause more gloomy, in that it is near all the iniquities of men. The second hath fire, snow, ice, ready for the day of the ordinance of the Most High, in the righteous judgment of the Most High. In it are all the spirits of the retributions for vengeance on the wicked. In the third heaven are the host of the armies which are ordained for the day of judgment to work vengeance on the spirits of deceit and of the liar. And the heavens up to the fourth above, these are holy. For in the highest of all dwelleth the great glory, in the holy of holies, far above all holiness. In the heaven next to it are the angels of the presence of the Most High, who minister and make propitiation to the Most High for all the ignorances of the righteous. And they offer to the Most High a reasonable, sweet-smelling savor and a bloodless offering. And in the heaven below this are the angels who bear the answers to the angels of the presence of the Most High. And in the heaven next to this are thrones, dominions, in which hymns are ever offered to the Most High. Therefore, whenever the Most High looketh upon us, all of us are shaken. Yea, the heavens and the earth and the abysses are shaken at the presence of His Majesty. But the sons of men, regarding not these things, sin and provoke the Most High. Now therefore, know that the Most High will execute judgment upon the sons of men. Because when the rocks are rent, and the sun quenched, and the waters dried up, and the fire trembling, and all creation troubled, and the invisible spirits melting away, and the grave spoiled in the suffering of the Most High, men unbelieving, will abide in their iniquity. Therefore, with punishment shall they be judged. Therefore, the Most High have heard thy prayer to separate thee from iniquity, and that thou shouldest become to him a son and a servant and a minister of his presence. A shining light of knowledge shalt thou shine in Jacob, 
and as the sun shalt thou be to all the seed of Israel. And a blessing shall be given to thee and to all thy seed until the Most High shall visit all the heathen in the tender mercies of his son, even forever. Nevertheless, thy sons shall lay hands upon him to crucify him, and therefore have counsel and understanding been given thee, that thou mightest instruct thy sons concerning him, because he that blesseth him shall be blessed, but they that curse him shall perish. And the angel opened to me the gates of heaven, and I saw the holy temple, and the Most High upon a throne of glory. And he said to me, Levi, I have given thee the blessings of the priesthood, until that I shall come and sojourn in the midst of Israel. Then the angel brought me to the earth, and gave me a shield and a sword, and said, Work vengeance on Sechem because of Dinah, and I will be with thee, because the Most High hath sent me. And I destroyed at that time the sons of Hamor, as it is written in the heavenly tablets. And I said to him, I pray thee, Most High, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in a day of tribulation. And he said to me, I am the angel who intercedeth for the race of Israel, that he smite them not utterly, because every evil spirit attacketh it. And after these things I was, as it were, awakened, and blessed the Most High and the angel that intercedeth for the race of Israel and for all of the righteous. And when I came to my father, I found a brazen shield, wherefore also the name of the mountain is Aspis, which is near Gebal, on the right side of Abila. And I kept these words in my heart. I took counsel with my father and with Reuben, my brother, that he should bid the sons of Hamor that they should be circumcised. For I was jealous because of the abomination which they had wrought in Israel. And I slew Sechem at the first, and Simeon slew Hamor. And after this our brethren came and smote the city with the edge of the sword, and our father heard it and was wroth. And he was grieved in that they had received the circumcision, and after that had been put to death. And in his blessings he dealt otherwise with us. For we sinned because we had done this thing against his will and he was sick upon that day. But I knew that the sentence of the Most High was for evil upon Sechem, for they sought to do to Sarah as they did to Dinah, our sister, and the Most High hindered them. And so they persecuted Abraham, our father, when he was a stranger, and they harried his flocks when they were multiplied upon him, and Jeblay, his servant, born in his house, they shamefully handled, and thus they did to all strangers, taking away their wives by force, and the men themselves driving into exile. But the wrath of the Most High came suddenly upon them to the uttermost. And I said to my father, Be not angry, sir, because by thee will the Most High bring to naught the Canaanites, and will give their land to thee, and to thy seed after thee. For from this day forward shall Sechem be called a city of them that are without understanding. For as a man mocketh at a fool, so did we mock them, because they wrought folly in Israel to defile our sister. And we took our sister from thence, and departed, and came to Bethel. And there I saw the thing again, even as the former, after we had passed seventy days. And I saw seven men in white raiment saying to me, Arise, put on the robe of the priesthood, and the crown of righteousness, and the breastplate of understanding, and the garment of truth, and the diadem of faith, and the tiara of miracle, and the ephod of prophecy. And each one of them bearing each of these things put them on me and said, From henceforth become a priest of the Most High, thou and thy seed forever. And the first anointed me with holy oil, and gave to me the rod of judgment. The second washed me with pure water, and fed me with bread and wine, the most holy things, and clad me with a holy and glorious robe. The third clothed me with a linen vestment like to any five. The fourth put round me a girdle like unto purple. The fifth gave to me a branch of rich olive. The sixth placed a crown on my head. The seventh placed on my head a diadem of priesthood and filled my hands with incense 
so that I served as a priest to the Most High. And they said to me, Levi, thy seed shall be divided into three branches for a sign of the glory of the Most High who is to come. And first shall he be that hath been faithful. No portion shall be greater than his. The second shall be in the priesthood. The third, a new name shall be called over him because he shall arise as king from Judah and shall establish a new priesthood after the fashion of the Gentiles to all the Gentiles. And his appearing shall be unutterable as of an exalted prophet of the seed of Abraham, your father. Every desirable thing in Israel shall be for thee and for thy seed and everything fair to look upon shall ye eat. And the table of the Most High shall thy seed apportion. And some of them shall be high priests and judges and scribes, for by their mouth shall the holy place be guarded. And when I awoke, I understood that this thing was like unto the former. And I hid this also in my heart and told it not to any man upon the earth. And after two days, I and Judah went up to Isaac after our father. And the father of my father blessed me according to all the words of the vision which I had seen. And he would not come with us to Bethel. And when we came to Bethel, my father Jacob saw in a vision concerning me that I should be to them for a priest unto the Most High. And he rose up early in the morning and paid tithes of all to the Most High through me. And we came to Hebron to dwell there and Isaac called me continually to put me in remembrance of the law of the Most High, even as the angel of the Most High showed to me. And he taught me the law of the priesthood, of sacrifices, whole burnt offerings, first fruits, free will offerings, and thank offerings. And each day he was instructing me and was busied for me before the Most High. And he said to me, Take heed, my child, of the spirit of fornication, for this shall continue, and shall by thy seed pollute the holy things. Take therefore to thyself, while yet thou art young, a wife, not having blemish, nor yet polluted, nor of the race of the Philistines or Gentiles. And before entering into the holy place, bathe. And when thou offerest the sacrifice, wash. And again, when thou finishest the sacrifice, wash. Of twelve trees ever having leaves, offer up the fruits to the Most High, as also Abraham taught me. And of every clean beast and clean bird, offer a sacrifice to the Most High. And of every firstling and of wine, offer first fruits. And every sacrifice thou shalt salt with salt. Now therefore, observe whatsoever I command you, children, for whatsoever things I have heard from my fathers, I have made known to you. I am clear from all your ungodliness and transgression, which you will do in the end of the ages against the Savior of the world, acting ungodly, deceiving Israel, and raising up against it great evils from the Most High. And ye will deal lawlessly with Israel, so that Jerusalem shall not endure your wickedness. But the veil of the temple shall be rent, so as not to cover your shame. And ye shall be scattered as captives among the heathen, and shall be for a reproach, and for a curse, and for a trampling underfoot. For the house which the Most High shall choose shall be called Jerusalem, as is contained in the book of Enoch the righteous. Therefore, when I took a wife, I was twenty-eight years old, and her name was Melchah, and she conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Gershom, for we were sojourners in our land. For Gershom is interpreted sojourning. And I saw concerning him that he would not be in the first rank. And Kohat was born in my thirty-fifth year towards the east. And I saw in a vision that he was standing on high in the midst of all the congregation. Therefore I called his name Kohat, which meaneth beginning of majesty and instruction. And thirdly, she bare to me Merari in the fortieth year of my life. And since his mother bare him with difficulty, she called him Merari, which meaneth my bitterness, because he also died. And Yoshebed was born in my sixty-fourth year in Egypt, for I was renowned then in the midst of my brethren. And Gershom took a wife, 
and she bare to him Lamni and Simei, and the sons of Kohav, Amram, Issar, Chibro, and Ozel, and the sons of Merari, Muli, and Hamusi. And in my ninety-fourth year, Amram took Yoshebed, my daughter, to him to wife, for they were born in one day, he and my daughter. Eighty years old was I when I went into the land of Canaan, and eighteen years when I slew Sechem. And at nineteen years I became priest, and at twenty-eight years I took a wife, and at forty years I went into Egypt. And behold, ye are my children, my children even of a third generation. In my hundred and eighteenth year, Joseph died. And now, my children, I command you that ye fear the Most High with your whole heart, and walk in simplicity according to all his law. And do ye also teach your children learning, that they may have understanding in all their life, reading unceasingly the law of the Most High. For everyone who shall know the law of the Most High shall be honored, and shall not be a stranger wheresoever he goeth. Yea, many friends shall he gain more than his forefathers, and many men shall desire to serve him and to hear the law from his mouth. Work righteousness, my children, upon the earth, that ye may find treasure in the heavens, and sow good things in your souls, that ye may find them in your life. For if ye sow evil things, ye shall reap all trouble and affliction. Get wisdom in the fear of the Most High with diligence. For though there shall be a leading into captivity, and cities be destroyed, and lands and gold and silver, and every possession shall perish, the wisdom of the wise none can take away, save the blindness of ungodliness and the palsy of sin. For even among his enemies shall it be to him glorious, and in a strange country a home, and in the midst of foes shall it be found a friend. If a man teach these things and do them, he shall be enthroned with kings, as was also Joseph our brother. And now, my children, I have learnt from the writing of Enoch that at the last ye will deal ungodly, laying your hands upon the Messiah in all malice, and your brethren shall be ashamed because of you, and to all the Gentiles shall it become a mocking. For our father Israel shall be pure from the ungodliness of the chief priest who shall lay their hands upon the Savior of the world. Pure is the heaven above the earth, and ye are the lights of the heaven as the sun and the moon. What shall all the Gentiles do if ye be darkened in ungodliness? So shall ye bring a curse upon our race for whom came the light of the world, which was given among you for the lighting up of every man. Him will ye desire to slay, teaching commandments contrary to the ordinances of the Most High. The offerings of the Most High will ye rob, and from his portion will ye steal. And before ye sacrifice to the Most High, ye will take the choicest parts, in despitefulness eating them with harlots. Amid excesses will ye teach the commandments of the Most High. The women that have husbands will ye pollute, and the virgins of Jerusalem will ye defile, and with harlots and adulteresses will ye be joined. The daughters of the Gentiles will ye take for wives, purifying them with an unlawful purification, and your union shall be like unto Sodom and Gomorrah in ungodliness. And ye will be puffed up because of the priesthood, lifting yourselves up against men. And not only so, but being puffed up also against the commands of the Most High, ye will scoff at the holy things, mocking in despitefulness. Therefore, the temple which the Most High shall choose shall be desolate in uncleanness, and ye shall be captives throughout all nations, and ye shall be an abomination among them. And ye shall receive reproach and everlasting shame from the righteous judgment of the Most High. And all who see you shall flee from you. And were it not for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob our fathers, not one from my seed should be left upon the earth. And now I have learnt in the book of Enoch that for seventy weeks will ye go astray, and will profane the priesthood, and pollute the sacrifices, and corrupt the law, and set at naught the words of the prophets. In perverseness ye will persecute righteous men, and hate the godly. The words of the faithful will ye abhor, 
and the man who reneweth the law in the power of the Most High will ye call a deceiver. And at last, as ye suppose, ye will slay him, not understanding his resurrection, wickedly taking upon your heads innocent blood. Because of him shall your holy places be desolate, polluted even to the ground, and ye shall have no place that is clean. But ye shall be among the Gentiles a curse and a dispersion, until he shall again look upon you, and in pity shall take you to himself through faith and water. And because ye have heard concerning the seventy weeks, hear also concerning the priesthood. For in each jubilee there shall be a priesthood. In the first jubilee, the first who is anointed into the priesthood shall be great, and shall speak to the Most High as to a father, and his priesthood shall be filled with the fear of the Most High. And in the day of his gladness shall he arise for the salvation of the world. In the second jubilee, he that is anointed shall be conceived in the sorrow of the loved ones, and his priesthood shall be honored and shall be glorified among all. And the third priest shall be held fast in sorrow, and the fourth shall be in grief, because unrighteousness shall be laid upon him exceedingly, and all Israel shall hate each one his neighbor. The fifth shall be held fast in darkness, likewise also the sixth and the seventh. And in the seventh there shall be such pollution as I am not able to express before the Most High and men, for they shall know it who do these things. Therefore shall they be in captivity and for a prey, and their land and their substance shall be destroyed. And in the fifth week they shall return into their desolate country, and shall renew the house of the Most High. And in the seventh week shall come the priests, worshippers of idols, contentious, lovers of money, proud, lawless, lascivious, abusers of children, and beasts. And after their punishment shall have come from the Most High, then will the Most High raise up to the priesthood a new priest, to whom all the words of the Most High shall be revealed, and he shall execute a judgment of truth upon the earth in the fullness of days. And his star shall arise in heaven, as a king shedding forth the light of knowledge in the sunshine of day. And he shall be magnified in the world until his ascension. He shall shine forth as the sun in the earth, and shall drive away all darkness from the world under heaven. And there shall be peace in all the earth. The heavens shall rejoice in his days, and the earth shall be glad. And the clouds shall be joyful, and the knowledge of the Most High shall be poured forth upon the earth as the water of seas. And the angels of the glory of the presence of the Most High shall be glad in him. The heavens shall be opened, and from the temple of glory shall the sanctification come upon him with the Father's voice as from Abraham the father of Isaac. And the glory of the Most High shall be uttered over him, and the spirit of understanding and of sanctification shall rest upon him in the water. He shall give the majesty of the Most High to his sons in truth forevermore. And there shall none succeed him for all generations, even forever. And in his priesthood shall all sin come to an end, and the lawless shall rest from evil, and the just shall rest in him. And he shall open the gates of paradise, and shall remove the threatening sword against Adam. And he shall give to his saints to eat from the tree of life, and the spirit of holiness shall be on them. And Belial shall be bound by him, and he shall give power to his children to tread upon the evil spirits. And the Most High shall rejoice in his children, and the Most High shall be well pleased in his beloved forever. Then shall Abraham and Isaac and Jacob be joyful, and I will be glad, and all the saints shall put on gladness. And now, my children, ye have heard all. Choose therefore for yourselves either the darkness or the light, either the law of the Most High or the works of the liar. And we answered our father, saying, Before the Most High will we walk according to his law. And our father said, the Most High is witness, and his angels are witnesses, and I am witness, and ye are witnesses concerning the word of your mouth. And we said, We are witnesses. And thus Levi ceased giving charge to his sons, and he stretched out his feet, and was gathered to his fathers, after he had lived a hundred and thirty-seven years.
and they laid him in a coffin. And afterwards, they buried him in Hebron by the side of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So be it. 